name is Mackenzie Harris and I am the host of the Wildcat Weight Show and today I get to sit down with Coach Chris Olney. We are so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while because you have had such an incredible time here at Fort Worth Community College. Nine years that you've been coaching in the last four years have been just a tremendous storybook almost. Um, so I really wanted to talk to you today and get your feel on what the past few seasons have been like for you and maybe where you're at as a coach right now. Well, it's been fun. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of success uh, here with the program. I think we've had kids going all over the country to sign for your scholarships and, and do well to represent the college well. Uh, so it's been you know, a journey uh, that, that we don't take for granted and hopefully we can keep it going. Absolutely. So let's talk about getting to that point, that first regional championship, that first state championship. Tell me about those feelings and what that was like for you to finally reach those goals. You know, it, it sounds strange, but it's been so long ago, I don't, I don't really remember. <laughs> you know, I remember when Dr. Brewwood, uh, Dr. Lewis called me in and, you know, told me I was going to be the coach. You know, my first thoughts were, you know, we're going to go out and win the region championship because it's never been done here at the college. You know, it was something that you know, I thought the college deserved and the community deserved, and it was something that I wanted to do, you know, as a coach. So from day one, you know, I got to assembling the staff and, and, and trying to figure out the kind of players that it took, you know, because years before that, we were knocking on the door, you know, almost almost there, you know, but it was something that kept blocking us. Uh, so I wanted to make sure we went out and we signed you know, the best character kids that could come in and get us over the hump. Uh, and, and one of them I remember vividly was Brandon Michelle. <laughs> you know, I mean, he made a big difference, you know, in, in finally getting us over the hump. So those things that you talk about, that character, in talking about those type of players that you need, it's more than just having the skills to come out here and play well. It's also being able to maybe lead the team and, you know, be those leaders on the Absolutely, we talk about that all the time in recruiting. You know, we, you know, we tell the guys that that everyone can't play here at Pearl River. You know, and and that's our way of going out and finding the kids that fit. You know, what it is that the college is trying to represent. Without we're trying to represent the program. You know, a lot of you know coaches go out and just look for the guys with you know most talent, and rightfully so. You know, those guys can, can help you also. But you know, here we we after something different. Uh, so, so, and I'm not gonna give away all my secrets, <laughs> but, 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 you know, we, we look for certain kids that, that fit exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish on and off the board. Absolutely, they've been into the program and that they can rise to those standards that you set here in Florida. Absolutely, you know, day one we tell them, you know, what got you here is not what's going to keep you here and what's not going to move you on, you know. And, uh, you know, we, I kind of jokingly say, you know, I'm like the doctor, you know, uh, when you go to the hospital, there's something wrong with you. Well, when you make to the hospital, there's something already wrong with you. I didn't create that problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just here to fix it. You know, and that's kind of, you know, what we do from day one. We get kids in and, you know, that, that that's missing a little something. And then we try to add those ingredients and, you know, put out a pretty good product. You know, one to their parents and, you know, their community when they go back home to be proud of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And talking about your program, that's kind of what I wanted to go back to. Talking about building that staff too. It's got to be hard and you know it's part of like college and especially whenever you have a winning program that your staff is going to go on and they're going to get pulled off to other different directions and really you know you've had changes so many times and having to be the only really constant in this program is that hard to have to rebuild you know whenever you maybe lose an assistant coach or anything? Yes but on this level it's, it's expected mm -hmm. you know and fortunately for myself you know when we had those changes in our staff we always had guys returning, you know, that were almost like assistant coaches, <laughs> you know, in the locker room, in the, in the dorm, in the cafeteria. So they kind of helped not only myself, but those new coaches that was coming into the phone mm -hmm. to kind of figure out how things, you know, kind of work, you know, around here. Uh, so that's made it, you know, very easy to, to transition when we do lose coaches. Yeah, so it's able to just fall right in. Exactly. Talking about those things that maybe has to be learned or anything, is there anything specific that about, you know, your practices or anything that's very important to you that you, you make sure that everybody's either wearing the same thing or that they act a certain way or that things are in a certain specific order while you practice? Well, you know, I think the, the key into, into becoming a successful coach nowadays is 
being able to adjust to the times without mm -hmm. giving up your core values. You know, when I first got started, I mean, these haircuts that I, that I coach now, you know, was something that <laughs> I would not allow, you know, and I used to tell the guys, well, when a player at Duke wears his hair like that, or a player at North Carolina wears his hair like that, then I'll start allowing you to wear your hair like that. And lo and behold, <laughs> Duke had three or four guys to wear their hair with rows and twisters and all that kind of stuff. So those guys couldn't wait to say, all right, coach, man, we can do it, you know. Yeah. And then with the tennis shoes, I used to try to make sure everybody had, you know, had the same tennis shoes, but you know, now those days are over. You know, so now I focus on things that's that's a little bit more important, you know, mm -hmm. like the com camaraderie of the guys, you know, making sure, you know, guys are about team and not about me. You know, uh, and making sure that the guys care about, you know, their, their brothers or their teammates in this college, you know, just more than, you know, me worrying about their hair haircut. You know, and I, and I think the guys, you know, appreciate that. You know, I, I even listen to their music now, you know, doing <laughs> practice and all that kind of stuff. And I like some of it. Uh, so, and I think that's made it a lot easier for me and the guys to relate to me and what we have going on. It allows me to focus on the bigger picture in which that's graduating from Pearl River and moving on to a four-year college and while we're here trying to win a championship. Right, exactly. Talking about that, kind of going back to what you said about being relatable to these guys. You know, being a coach for nine years, I mean, nine years ago, I don't know for sure, but everybody says that there's a lot of differences that's happened in the world. And like you said, over those nine years, I can only imagine that back your first team that you coached to now the kids are a lot different, I would imagine, and being able to relate to all different aspects of kids. You know, absolutely. You know, I got guys that come back to practice and then tell me after practice, Coach, you get soft. You know, but I'm not as tough on the guys as I were, you know, there. But, but, you know, I think every team needs something different. You know, like, you know, this year, you know, if you came and watched us play, you would never notice it. But we very rarely, you know, practice a lot. You know, we, we came in this year and we just got up shots and made sure we kept our conditioning and did a lot of film work. You know, whereas in years past, it was two hour grind, two hour grind. You know, but I didn't feel like this team needed that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's part of being a leader. You know, being a, you know the, the part of being, you know, an effective leader is being able to recognize, you know, what the situation needs at that moment, and not being afraid to adjust to it. You mm -hmm. know, and not being pigheaded. You know, like some coaches are, and saying, no, this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to do it this way, or we're not going to do it. You know, and I, you know, I, I think those days are over. You know, and and. and and I think you're still able to maintain the core things that's that's important to you. You know, sharing the basketball, being a good teammate, rebounding, defending. And I think those kids appreciate it more when they see that you're trying to understand it from their point of view. Absolutely. Like you said, become more relatable. And Absolutely. They want to give you everything. Exactly. And they want to play for you. Exactly. Um, so kind of turning in and going towards the games, you know, like talk a little bit about the season and maybe what you saw during the season, what were some of the points, maybe some highlights, and Maybe some favorite moments from this past season. Well, as crazy as it sounds, I don't, I don't really go back. You know, yeah. I always, I'm always thinking about the next, the mm -hmm. next challenge, the next team, the next, the next thing. Now I watch a lot of film. You know, I was up at two o'clock in the morning the other night watching the Gulf Coast game. You know, because we lost the Gulf Coast here, and I don't ever want that to happen again. You know, but but the one thing that I, that I can go back and remember is that the growth of some of those guys. You know, Dylan Brumfield. You know, from the time he came in to the end of the season, you know, was, was I think even his parents were surprised mm -hmm. of how well he played. Uh, 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 Carlos Williamson, you know, came in out of shape, you know, and the speed of the game, you know, was, was something that he wasn't used to. And the demands that I was putting on him was something that, you know, he wasn't used to. And, and his growth you know, now, you know, I think he's gearing up the prime to be our next All-American. You know, I, I really do. I think he's going to have that, that kind of season. You know, and then those guys, you know, Earl Smith and, the, you know, the Twins and and, uh, and Kieran Gross, you know, just them being able to maintain, you know, the things that they were able to maintain because the year before it didn't go exactly the way we planned it with COVID and them having to deal with all that and them coming back for their super sophomore year and able to win that championship is something that, you know, I will forever be grateful for. And I know it's something that those kids will, will never forget as long as they win. So you talk about a successful season, winning the state championship, winning the regional championship. How do you then handle the tournament too, and having to deal with, you know, going up, fighting a really hard battle, tying the game up against a tough team, and then ultimately not being able to walk away from the win? How do you then adjust to that and go into the next season with 
fire Well, it's easy to have the fire because we didn't accomplish, I guess, the, our ultimate goal, and that's winning the national championship, like our chilling team did. <laughs> okay, you know, but but you know, those guys, you know, we talk about it all the time. Of, you know, I understand that I'm that I'm raising men, I'm help raising men, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, get guys to understand that, you know, sometimes, you know, you may do everything right and you still don't get the results, you know, that you're looking for. You know, we, we accept that here, you know, in this program. You know, we're gonna do everything that we're supposed to do to put ourselves in position, you know, to, to chase our ultimate goal. But if it don't happen, you know, we don't really look back because we know that we gave it our all. You know, and in my walk-in locker room, obviously, you know, guys were disappointed, and you know, rightfully so because, you know, we we're very competitive. You know, that's one of the, the staples of our program. You know, but at the same time, we were able to sit down and enjoy the moment, and realize that you know we were still able to do something that, you know, 300 and some colleges couldn't do. You know, that's to make it down there and become one of the last 24 teams playing. Uh, and the memories that we were able to enjoy, you know, with the 16 hour bus ride there and back, you know, it's something that, you know, I think those kids, you know, will never forget. I know it's something that, you know, I'll never forget. And uh, so it's, it, was, it was a special moment. Absolutely, something special and a highlight in your life. Yeah, absolutely, sure. absolutely. One thing as a coach, you know, and I just think about it as, you know, a long season that you go through. And then, you know, me saying that about, you know, how do you find it again? It's like, You've gone through this, you did the whole hard work, and then knowing how much it takes to get back there to try to make that goal happen again. And how do you keep yourself motivated each year now? Like, what what is it that motivates you? <laughs> you know, that's 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 a great question, uh, and, it, and it's just sort of hard to explain because you know it's just a part of me. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, you know, how do I continue to breathe, you know, knowing that you just have to breathe, you know, that's that's just the way that I am I'm motivated. You know, something happened to me when I was like 12 years old, I think, I was in a pump pass and kick competition, you know, my dad used to spend hours with me working on my kicking in the yard, so when it came time for this event, he came to watch me, and I was kicking the ball all over the place, to the right, to the left, I, I mean, I, I wasn't doing anything that we worked on, and I looked across the, the stadium, he got up and walked out. You know, and, and, you know, I think about that a lot because, you know, nowadays a 12 year old, that may crush him, you know, but right. but for me, you know, it lit a fire in me, you know, to say, I'm not, you know, living up to the to, to the moment, you know, and then I'm prepared for it. And I went on and, and won, the, won the competition. So when I got home that, when he got home that day, I just had the trophy sitting on the counter and I was eating and he walked in and he said, so you won, huh? I said, yes, sir. And we just moved on and started talking about something else. Really? Yeah, we never even talked about him leaving until like 10, 15 years later. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, and what back then, you know, I didn't see the lesson that he was mm -hmm. teaching me then, but, but I just had some image to understand you gotta keep going, you gotta keep moving, you gotta keep going. You know, you can't think about the last kick, you gotta worry about the next kick. You know, and that's kind of the approach that I have now. You know, I, I don't I don't look back to you know to what's what's happening, you know. You know, somebody told me a long time ago also. You know, you never worry about what people say, you always worry about what people think. Mm -hmm. You know, and that stuck with me for a while, you know, because, you know, a lot of times you get caught up with, you know, the things people say, both good and bad. That's you know, so when someone tells me, you're doing a good job, you're doing this, well, I'm always thinking, well, I can do better, I can do better, you know, and I think, you know, that's just built up in me. So I don't look at it as like we've done this the last few years. I look at it as if someone else wants to do the same thing that we've done the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to let them. Absolutely. I want yeah. it to be us. I want it to be Pearl River. I want it to be this Hopperville. I want it to be this community. I want it to be this program. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's the reason why I just can't turn it off for some reason. Right. And talking about that, that not being able to turn it off. So now that we've gone the past four seasons and had three state championships, three regional championships, what is the next goal for you? Like, what is that still the goal every year is to get back there? Or is there now the national championship is what's really going yeah, yeah, well, there's a lot of goals tied up into one, you know, and to, mm -hmm. to be completely honest, it's about finishing up today with recruiting, finishing up tomorrow with recruiting, finishing up with these day. guys graduating, yes. you know, and I think if you if you do it that way as a coach, one, you don't get burned out mm -hmm. and you don't miss steps, you know, mm -hmm. like I tell people when you're jogging, you don't look all the way down the road, you look at what's in front of you because you don't want to trip over, right. 
right. you know, big rock or something like that. So that's something that, you know, we try to do here in this program. It's the next step, it's the next step. Now, ultimately, yes, we want to get back to where we were and get the position that we, we were in the last couple of years and exceed that, you know, mm -hmm. go on to win a national championship and all that kind of stuff here in Mississippi, the second team. You know, but until then, we understand that you know, we got to take care of what's next, you know, what's, what we have to do after lunch, you know, what we have to do tomorrow mm -hmm. morning, you know. And I think that way you continue to move in the right direction. Exactly. Talking about those things too and recruiting and different things that you're working on right now. So we were just talking earlier, like what's your day-to-day -day and your schedule is right now and you're like recruiting, you know? So what really has helped in the past few years in the recruiting game maybe? And then what are still some challenges that you're finding uh, in recruiting? Well, on this level, you know, even though we've had a lot of success, you know, and a lot of attention on our program, you know, you would think we call a kid and he signs, mm -hmm. you know, but it really doesn't work that way, you know, because you're still dealing with 18-year-olds that care about themselves for the most part, you know, because you come to junior college to improve your academics or to get the division one offer, a four-year school offer that, you, you know, you couldn't earn in high school, you know, so that challenge is still there, you know, so when we pick up the phone, we call kids, you know, they don't just all come running, you know, it's still a lot of work that has to be done. Now, obviously the championships and the success helps. It gets us on the phone with, us, mm -hmm. with the kid and the parent. It, uh, it starts, you know, jump starts the process, you know, but once we get them on campus and they see, you know, our arena, they see the campus, how nice it is, how beautiful it is, they see the people walking around, you, you know, we normally end up getting the ones that, that, that we want, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, you know, but it's, it's a day-to-day it's -day challenge because now we're in a position to where we don't take some of the kids that we used to take, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, for bigger fish now because We've elevated our program to a point to where we don't just have to settle mm -hmm. on on certain talent. You know, we, we go after the ones that you know that Indian Hills going after Northwest Florida going after you know some of the bigger junior colleges in the country because our name is right there next to theirs competing for the same thing, now, which is something that I'm proud of. That's awesome. That's yeah. an incredible thing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, too, you know, I don't think it's talked about enough that you know you're not only just playing the game of basketball. They're also in college, though. They don't, you don't get to be just like a professional basketball team where that's your only focus. You're also trying to get these kids through college. And I, I'm assuming that that's a hard task to not only be juggling playing a season of basketball that's really intense and hard, but also to be going through, you know, trying to get these kids to graduate in their classes. So what kind of things do you do to make sure that everybody's really staying on top of their classes? I run them. <laughs> okay. I run yeah. them a lot, you know, if they, if they don't do the things they're supposed to do. But no, we have fabulous assistant coaches here that stay on top of it, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, the people above us does a, do a tremendous job with the professors, you know, making sure that the, the coaches and the parents and the players, you know, know what's coming up next, you know, staying on, 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 on task. Uh, so that part of it is easy because it's already organized before it get, gets to us, you know, and that goes back to what I said earlier about recruit certain type of kids, you know, mm -hmm. kids that fit, you know, exactly what it is that we're looking for. You know, we don't want kids that just want to come in just to play ball, you know, uh -huh. just to win a championship. You know, we want kids who want to be able to come here and do some things and go back to their family or their community, you know, to, to be able to, to tell stories about what they were able to accomplish. And then hopefully we'll be able to get some of those future generation kids here at Pearl River. You know, so it's, it's the complete package, you know, that we're looking for. And uh, that's kind of what we go after. And that's why recruiting is so hard, you know, because we make sure that we do everything that we can to target, you know, that those type of kids. Well, our rules dictate, you know, that we have to sign at least, you know, 80% of our roster has to come from Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, which is something that, you know, I used to frown upon, but now, you know, after competing with a lot of those bigger schools out of state, you know, I realized, you know, that our guys are more team oriented, you know, than those guys uh, are. You know, because we have a lot of guys that, that's from this area, that's played against each other in high school, you know, that's competing against each other in high school and that are friends. You mm -hmm. know, and I think the other thing that helps is that, you know, some of those guys, you know, they come in already with a pecking order. But, you know, some people know that Carlos can do this and Cam Bryant can do this, so they know, you know, where to pass the ball to them and because they've played against them for years and years and years. You know, so it, it helps us, you know, Mississippi Junior College coaches, 
in the sense that we just have to kind of teach our system and get them used to playing with each other together. Uh, but but they normally already come in with some sense of you know respect towards mm -hmm. one another, you know, which I think has made it you know a lot easier you know to get teams together that's that's more ready to play with one another. Whereas colleges from out of state, you know, it takes them a little longer for them to build that camaraderie. Uh, whereas here, you know, it's already almost set. Right, because you don't have that trust. You don't know that person. Really Absolutely. Well. Like, if I pass him the ball, am I going to be able to trust that he's going to be able to take care of it? Yeah. Absolutely, because, you know, like I said, they're still trying to get a four-year scholarship. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it is tough to convince kids that you can have six points a game, you can have 12 points a game, and still go on and sign a four-year scholarship. Mm -hmm. You know, but luckily for us, we can prove that. You know, we've had kids that average four points a game and still sign a Division One scholarship. You know, because here it's, you know, Division One coaches respect the job, you know, that we've done. So now it's about getting them to play the right way. And then they still go out, you know, and, and gain the four-year attention, you know, that they're coming for. You know, we've been fortunate to have six All-Americans the last seven years. You know, this past year, Jerron averaged 12 points a game and was an All-American. That's unheard of right. you know, here, here in Mississippi. So that that also will go on to, to help us with recruiting for kids and to help us coaching also to let kids know you don't have to average 30 points a game to become, you know, what it is you're trying to become. You just have to be a good teammate. Play, game, play the game the right way. Play the game the right way, exactly. And you talk about going on to a four year and transferring out of here. What kind of things maybe do you do with the kid that you're helping them get to that aspect? Of, I know that obviously they have to prove themselves on the court or anything. Is there anything that you have to do? Like, do you have to make phone calls for them or help them get anywhere? Yes, uh, absolutely. But a lot of four year coaches call us. You know, but mm -hmm. the biggest thing we, we do is we, we, we help the kid understand themselves. You know, a lot of kids come in. And they kind of all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. They they think they can shoot like Steph Curry and jump like LeBron <laughs> James. We got to tell them, no, man, calm you, down. you calm down, you know, relax. <laughs> you, let's let's figure out who you are as a player, and then let's expand on that. You know, and I think that's what we've done in the last couple of years. That that's been the reason why we've been propelled, you know, us to one of the you know top schools, I guess, in the country, because we're not afraid to coach kids, and we have kids that end up accepting. You know what it is that we're trying to, to teach them as far as being the best version of themselves mm -hmm. and not the best version of 2k nba video game mm -hmm. basketball and all that kind of stuff and i i think they appreciate it at the end of the day i'm sure they do i think there's no way that they couldn't appreciate no, that. exactly no, we hope so talking about too earlier that you got some kids that are moving on now coming back next year that's what you're recruiting for right now so what do you see maybe right now as far as the recruiting game, are you excited about this next upcoming season? Are you seeing good things and can be excited about it? Absolutely. Well, this time of year, I'm always excited. You know, I think we signed a team that's better than last year's team. Now, we do this interview next year in November, I tell you, this is the worst team I've ever had. <laughs> right. You know, here at Pearl River, whatever. But no, I think we signed some kids that, that's going to come in and, and be able to help us. Uh, obviously, having those Cam Brown and Dylan Brownfield college returning, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, you know, impress them and will help us some. But I think we got some kids that can come in and fill, you know, some of those holes, you know, that we're losing. You know, I thought, I think we addressed shooting in this recruiting class. You know, I don't think we shot the ball well enough all the time, you know, which which I th think this recruiting class, we got some guys that can come in that can make shots more, which open the floor more because I think Carlos is going to be, you know, a pretty good player next year. So mm -hmm. he needs us to go out and find some guys that can shoot. So guys can just clamp down on him you know, like they did with Jerron this past year. So I'm, that's what I'm excited about. And I think we got a lot of kids that kind of fit, you know, what it is we're trying to do. So I think, you know, looking forward, you know, we, we have another pretty good season. That's awesome. I hope so too. And Coach Tony, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today and talking to me about your program and talking to me about your coaching ways and just being very open about everything that you've been going through the past few seasons. And I think this is that it's been great. And you said some amazing things. I think anybody can take out on and they can use it for themselves in the future or even tomorrow, you know. So thank you so much for sitting down. Well, thank you, and I heard you got engaged. I did. So congratulations I did. on that. Now I also Stress. give marital advice oh. and all that kind of stuff. 
You know, yeah. if you ever need me and I can help you with that, I'm gonna be coming to. I'm gonna be knocking on your door then. I'm gonna be knocking on it. it Congratulations! Thank that. you so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you again, Coach Only, and I want to thank everybody for watching today's episode of the Wildcat Way Show. I appreciate everybody that tunes in, and uh, definitely getting to hear from Coach Only was a treat today. And uh, you can always follow us on any of our social media accounts at the Wildcat Way Show, and we hope that you continue to live your life the Wildcat Way. Go Wildcats!